So good evening. Let's roll. I would like to call the 2016 annual meeting of the town Arlington School District to order, please. Um, if it would please the assembly, if we could stand and join in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. I need to say it above. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bernie's picture is not up there. <laughs> Where's Bernie? So, um, before we get started this evening, I'd like to remind the assembly that if you have something to say, please stand up, wait to be recognized, and someone will bring you a microphone. So. Everyone can hear your question and comments. So the warrant order of business tonight is found on page 67 of the school district's annual report. The first order of business is to elect a moderator and a reporting clerk for the meeting. So, entertain a motion to elect John L. Whalen II as moderator for, and Robin Wilcox as the recording clerk for this 2006 annual meeting. So, we keep, do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Yes, we have a, I'm sorry, you're waiting, oh, you're the second, okay, thank you, I'm sorry, I thought we were having a discussion. Um, Three seconds. If there's no discussion, then all in favor uh, of electing John L. Whalen the second as moderator and Robin Wilcox as recording clerk, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, another housekeeping motion. I'll entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the warning for the 2016 annual meeting of the Arlington Town School District. Uh, this is again reprinted on page 67 of your annual, annual report. So, motion to dispense with the. So moved. Sorry, your name for the record? Um, Brian Allen. Brian Allen. A second. <laughs> uh, is there any discussion on the motion before the assembly? If not, do you signify by uh, passing the motion? To s In order to signify passing the motion, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? Again, along the housekeeping lines, um, I'll entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes from the uh, 2015 annual school meeting. These are reprinted on, beginning on page 61 of the annual report. So Do we have a second to the motion? All those in favor of waiving the reading of the minutes from the 2015 annual school meeting, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? I want to hear about red. The motion carries. And finally, um, I would entertain a motion to allow the school district administrators who are not Arlington residents to address the assembly. Uh, these would include uh, Principal Lacoste, uh, the Director of Special Education, uh, William Basic, uh, Business Manager Eleanor Fischette, uh, the High School Principal Tim Stewart, and Superintendent Pullen. 
We have a motion to allow. There was and a second. Second. All those in favor of allowing the school district administrators who are not Arlington residents speak at this assembly, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries. Moving on to the next warrant order of business, Article Second. <coughs> Uh, to receive the reports of the district officers for the preceding year. Uh, these reports begin on page three of the annual report. Is there a motion to accept the reports as presented? And a second. Second. <laughs> Is there any discussion regarding either the motion on before the assembly or the reports. Then, all those in favor of adopting the reports as presented in the annual report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Then the reports are accepted. Article third, the warning, to fix the compensation to be paid to the officers of the district for the year beginning July 1st, 2016. Now, the officers' compensation can be found in three places in the annual report. Uh, they're on page 45, on page 41, and on pages 48, 49. As you look at those pages, you want to look at the uh, Line items for the, for the board, the treasurer, the clerk, and the moderator. The uh, salaries are, are spread over the budgets for the elementary school, the middle, middle school, and the high school. The salaries for the board, the moderator, and the clerk remain the same. The treasurer's salary has been increased by $332, which represents a 3% increase. The total amount of compensation being voted on is $20,514. So, is there a motion from the assembly to compensate the officers of the district? Is there a second? any discussion on the compensation recommended by the school board? If not, then all those in favor of adopting the compensation of the various school directors as recommended by the board, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries. Article 4 is the next board order of business to authorize the school board acting on behalf of the district to borrow such sums of money in anticipation of taxes as may be necessary to properly finance the affairs of the school district. Motion from the floor to adopt. Was there a second? Did you get a second, Ron? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, is there any discussion on Article 4? If not, then all those in favor of authorizing the school board acting on behalf of the district to borrow such sum or sums of money in anticipation of taxes as may be necessary to properly finance the affairs of the school district, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the article carries. So moving on to Article 5th. To have presented by the school board in its its estimates of the expenses of the school district for the ensuing year. This is a public information hearing regarding the budget and related items, Articles A, B, C, D, and E, set forth in the morning. So I'll now turn over the floor to the chairman and the superintendent. Thank you for attending this evening. I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, 
first order of business is really a recap of the board's goals. The BBSU board, the Arlington board, and Sandy boards get together every August to develop goals for the year. Um, so uh, initially just want to run through those goals. There are six of them. Discuss what we've done and what we plan to do going forward to address these goals. Uh, first, again, as a summary, we discussed this last year, Arlington is very fortunate not to see decreasing enrollment in our school community. Uh, 2016, we actually had 436 students from uh, pre-K through 12. We're very fortunate to be one of four in the state that is, um, again, not experiencing a declining enrollment. Um, goal number one is that the board will focus on best practices for leading the district. To that end, we're working with multiple school districts to discuss uh, Act 46 merger possibilities. I'll talk more about that later. We also have a uh, board policy committee that's done extensive work on revising and adding policies to remain compliant with the agency of education's requirements. Goal number two, to improve parent and community relations and improve, uh, improve and increase uh, community support of schools. We've hosted two community forums, one to talk about middle school and what that might mean to the community, and another to discuss universal, uni, universal pre-K, which includes pre-K uh, program for three-year-olds. We've also uh, developed a new website for both the BBSU and the schools. This includes a great parent portal where parents can log in and uh, track grades. They can actually log into their students' lunch accounts, add money, and track where purchases are being made. Um, you know, during the lunchtime and at snack time. We've also improved school to parent communications at the high school with the help of um, Melissa Smith. She's doing a great job getting email blasts out and we've got some great distribution lists and she's doing some great work around that. Goal number three, curriculum planning and alignment for grades pre-K through 12 to educate all children at all levels. We want to meet kids where they are. Uh, we've added a part-time curriculum director Ms. Uh, Dr. Louisa Smith, uh, Lisa Millington is actually our, our part-time curriculum director. She's overseeing new initiatives and helping us a great deal with professional development. Professional development for staff is designed to sp support these new initiatives. Um, and this includes uh, proficiency-based learning and multi-tiered systems of support. Again, you want to meet the children where they are, whether that's socially, behaviorally, academically. Goal number four to manage resources to support schools in a thoughtful and a responsible manner. Our 2017 budget increase is below the allowable growth threshold, which is part of Act 46. Um, we're projecting a 0 0.042 cent decrease to the Homestead tax rate this year. The board is working diligently on a facilities improvement plan that includes a contract for solar power that we actually just signed this past week see that work starting this summer uh, on the roof of Fisher. <coughs> Goal number five, focus on supporting student learning. We've uh, passed the first stage of developing uh, professional learning plans with the help again of Dr. Millington. We are working on multi-tier systems of support which again addresses student needs at any given time in their academic uh, career. This is geared especially to help all students succeed. Middle school model is in place for grades six through eight, and we continue to offer academic, uh, sorry, accelerated coursework for those students that are interested. Goal number six is to expand student support and outreach to students. Uh, Principal Lacoste is working on a 2016 summer camp program for the students at Fisher. Uh, Principal Stewart is expanding the number of student advisors at the high school for the 16-17 school year. And flexible learning pathways, including the VTEL VLC or Vermont Virtual Learning uh, Collaborative, offers online courses for, for classes that we may not be able to offer here in the school. And we also have dual enrollment for juniors and seniors who can, off, uh, who can earn college credit for taking classes in their off time. I'm going to jump ahead one slide, sorry about that. Act 46, I mentioned just a few minutes ago. Um, Act 46 is the state's unification plan, district unification plan. There are currently 270 school districts in the state of Vermont. A third of them oversee single schools serving fewer than 100 students. The state is calling for us to consolidate districts by 2019, and we're working hard to 
see what the possibilities, challenges, and, and opportunities are for Arlington, along with some other districts that we've talked to. Um, we're working with Steve Sanborn, who is an independent consultant from the VSBA, and we hope to have, uh, we'll have a, an initial meeting with him next week, and we'll have a community forum in the spring to talk about his findings and what opportunities we see ahead of us. I'm gonna go back to my budget overview. Uh, this can be found on page 51, for any of you that can't necessarily see, uh, see the slide ahead. Last year's uh, total budget was 7.200175. This year we're projecting an increase of $59,972 in overall education spending, along with an article uh, of $22,127 that we're asking to be applied to the tech, uh, technology sinking fund. We would bring our total projected budget to 7.282274. Actually, a reduction in per pupil spending by a little over $100. And again, a reduction in the, t um, the homestead tax rate of 4.22 cents. Um, it was an interesting email from the VSBA actually yesterday, I believe. Statewide budgets are up almost 2.5%. So the district, the administration has done an excellent job in keeping costs low, um, maintaining programs, building on programs. They've done a fantastic job this year. Reasons for the increase of the budget uh, can be found on page 28. It's a nice one-page summary. All salary lines for teachers and support staff uh, reflect two years of increases. Because last year was a um, contract negotiation year, salary increases were, were held in a contingency line item. This year you'll see them actually in the salary line items. Um, those reflect 3% for faculty and 2.75% increase for support staff. Health benefits nationally are increasing. Um, State of Vermont is seeing a, an increase of about 8% in healthcare premiums for staff. Curriculum director I mentioned before, Dr. Millington. Uh, it's a new position this year. It's a half-time, uh, full-time equivalent. The district funds roughly $6,000 per school. The balance of her salary is covered in a grant. Luckily, dental premiums did not increase like health premiums did. We're seeing about a $2,000 savings, 2.5% 2 less than what we initially expected. We're projecting a reduction in electric costs due to our solar project that I mentioned earlier. Reductions in stipends. Again, the administration is going to be working diligently to, to make sure that these stipends make sense. Uh, restructuring teaching assignments. Uh, Mr. Stewart uh, was hired as principal so that made us, forced us to make some moves from a teaching perspective. Um, it actually uh, also ended up reducing the health and phys ed um, position by about half, half time, FTE. Over in, overall savings and staff changes due to changes like I just mentioned, uh, account for another $50,000 or so in savings. And then we offered early retirement this year. We had a couple of people take us up on that. So it's an additional $15,000 in savings. Questions? Mr. Williams. So you're reducing the physical education. Is that are you meeting state requirements? We are. Tim, do you want to speak to that? What's the very minimum? We are meeting the requirements. And um, to answer that, it, it hasn't been reduced as it has in the past. Nothing has changed and, uh, from what it was last year. The same number of offers. One request, you put the rope back up.
So um, those programs that you're speaking of from three or four years ago were through a 21st century grant, which we no longer receive, but we do offer uh, homework club and after school activities for students in K to five if they so choose, uh, but they pay for those. I think I heard most of what you said, but it seems to me that any kind of a program like that must cost a great deal of money. It's very much worthwhile for some parents you can afford to uh, encourage the children to different places, introduce them to uh, different experiences and ways of gaining knowledge and self-confidence. The, the majority of children, I would guess, don't have that opportunity. And as much as, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's great to save a little money, I just wonder if there's really a gain when something like an enrichment program for all children, those who don't get those experiences because of economic reasons for one thing, um, whether it pays to cut something like that out. said about the new Act 46 and that you have a new person that you're doing a, um, what is he, he's looking into how we're going to save money or? He's looking at other possibilities, a speed standards and independent consulting. So before we had already had this done by another company, mm -hmm. so what's the difference why we can't use that information as opposed to the new information? That, are we paying again for the same type of audit or study to be done? It's actually part of a grant. Judy, I don't know if I can touch that. Um, one of the reasons why is because at, with Act 46, the rules changed, if you will, and there's different parameters around it. But we are actually funding it through a $5,000 grant from the state of Vermont. And when we get to the point of we may pursue a merger, if, if we get to that point with another district, we can also access the money through a grant to pay for what's called a formal study. So the, the state set money aside so it won't actually cost us anything, not in our local budget, but of course you know our taxes go up there and fund it anyway. So that's where the money came from. And it's because um, your, your last study was done, I think, under Act 153 and 156. So now we have Act 153, Act 156, and Act 46, and all the rules apply until 2017 and then 153 and 156 go away. So it's pretty complex and that's why we wanted to get um, a consultant to help us do that and run some of the numbers and just really look at the possibilities. And then he will present to, we'll do a community forum for the whole town in the spring when he's done, I'm thinking April. So um, he will present all the possibilities of mergers that we could do and then the board wants to get feedback so that they can make a good decision um, that reflects what the town wants. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, I also have, when you're talking about your sinking funds, and I'm looking on page 58, 59, when it says the board approves the transfer, I'm assuming that it's to pay. So you pull out of the sinking fund what you need to pay, correct? Yes. Yes. So like for the plant maintenance fund, pulled out $45,592. And then on your expenditure side, you spent $51,431. That's a, a difference of like $5,838. So where did that money come from to pay out the plant maintenance if you only pulled out, you pulled out less than what you spent?
It's almost there. But there were a couple of reasons that happened. One is we were all new last year, so it took a little bit longer to gather the information together. Then we lost one of our business. Excuse me, you just can't hear me. Sure.
So you're asking the town to vote on an unaudited budget, basically, correct? Well, that's the budget we put from last year's budget. But you're producing a budget for us to, to vote on with unaudited figures, is my point. Yes. Okay. Is that legal to do? When, when Eleanor, business manager, did the trial balance, it was about fifty-seven thousand dollars. Okay, so you're asking for twenty-five percent of fifty. Of the 50 Approximately, yes. Okay. All right. I, I just, you know, yep. I mean, that could have been, you know, been a hundred thousand right. dollars, or it could have been fifty-seven thousand. You know, I, that's what I wanted. My second question is, I went to one of the pre-K meetings. Yes. And. Um, they indicated at that time, by February 15th, they would have an answer, and I have not heard. Could you tell me what the answer to your district um, is? We don't have an answer yet. They sent us a letter a week or so ago and said they were putish, putting it off until March 15th. I think that's their next regional meeting. So we have no answer. Okay. I just um, didn't, didn't want to miss it. The state. <coughs> that did the regional hearing. Okay, thank you. Yep. Can I hear a Yes. 
I'm glad to see that uh, we're moving to solar energy on the schools. Is that capital cost listed in the budget? Can you repeat that? I said I'm glad to see that the capital is moving to a solar energy for the schools. Is that capital expense listed in the budget? Hey, can we have your name for the record, please? Michael Murno. Thank you. Um, maybe I should just stand up there with Don. <coughs> the way that we're getting the um, solar funded is through canned solar, and they will do, they, they install everything. We have a contract with them for 25 years. We get, and Jamie questions the audience, you can probably help me out with the percent, but I think we get. 10% 10, 10 or 12% of how much money is it 12? 12. Right, it's 12. 12% um, of the money that they earn. But after seven years, we have the option to buy them out and for, for a reduced rate, and we would own the whole thing and we'd get 100%. <coughs> so that's the contract that we are entering into in the end. So, after how many years? Seven. seven. After 25. The, the contracts are 25, but after seven, we can buy them out. There's a buyout clause in there. So in seven years, you may be hearing about that at the time you But is there an annual cost for this contract? There's no cost to us at all. They use our roof of, of Fisher, and then they pay us basically 12% of their profits to, for the use of the roof. Oh, so. Okay, so they're leasing your roof to generate solar energy? Yes, and they get the tax credits. When their tax credits are done, they'll sell it back to us. So is that money for the lease shown in the budget? Mm -hmm. $3,000 Well, the $3,000 reduction that we'll have for doing it is in the budget. Oh, that's a 3 Yeah, and we, we, I'll be honest, we estimated maybe on the low side because we're not really sure how much we'll get. And until we have it for a year, we thought we'd go conservative with our estimate until we get the real numbers. Okay. And uh, one other question regarding social, uh, uh, solar energy. Uh, you have a new contract underway for this year. Is it the same contract with the same contractor for the, the new solar? project? I understand. I understand there's a new solar project this year. Just and is that that's the it. same contractor? That's so it. That's the one I just oh, explained. That's the same one. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm looking at this audit update. And I'm just going to hold this to you because it's not audited. Thank you. Well, could you explain to me why the hot lunch program? Okay, can you hear me all right, Don? Can you explain to me why the hot lunch program is eighty thousand dollars in the hole? Where, where, where is this? Is this is the audit update? Yes. And it's on um, government fund types, and this is second page. And it's unassigned, and it's showing to me that the school uh, lunch program is $80,000 negative. I kind of would like to know why. Um, well, there were a lot of factors in that. Apparently, they have been running a deficit for a number of years, but it really wasn't showing up. And last year when we started, it was about, we were projected in the fall that it would be $42,000. Partially because we have more big people taking health benefits, which hadn't happened, you know, like four or five years ago or six years ago, and then they were getting health benefits. Um, the kids really weren't buying a lot of food. And then the other thing is we had an audit by the state for our hot lunch program, and they said that they that they were reporting reportable meals incorrectly, and that when we corrected that, we had less income from the reportable meals. And who was they that were reporting incorrectly? Um, the hot lunch. 
they'll have a lot of people have to count the meals and they have to report it. And they, basically they change the reporting requirement. Is, is this all part of free and reduced? Yes. So you didn't get the uh, reimbursement back from the state? Well, we did get reimbursement, but not as much. Okay, I still don't understand why. Well, it was a couple of, a number of factors. One is it had been losing money for a long time. Two, we had less kids buying, not, not getting free reduced, but actually outright buying meals for whatever reason. And three was when they did the when they did the audit of how they do things. And, and that's like just looking at how they do it. They told them they had to report differently. And so um, we had less reportable meals. So we had less um, money coming from the state. Okay. But if you're reporting on the POS system, doesn't that system automatically generate the reports that you need to submit to the state? Yeah. It's the way you count the meals, like they have to have a, a vegetable and a fruit and a this and that. And that if the kids weren't selecting it correctly, they couldn't report it. It's not, it has nothing to do with the POS system. So do the kids go into the computer? Or is someone actually running the computer as the kids bring their meals through? Someone's at the computer. So the, the person running the computer is not generating the correct information for you to do your reports. No. No. Okay. Right, the, kids I'm the, kids the kids were taking the whole meal. There you go. Okay. I just I don't know how the system works, so I'm trying to figure it out. So that's why I was asking how that system yeah. works in order to generate it. Yeah. So we're eighty thousand because of those insignificant things. They are significant. And now we're outsourcing it, so we're trying to manage that better. And, and it is being managed much better. And we shouldn't have any deficit this year. I've got a question. Oh, thank you. Um, my name is Brian Allen, and we live on Hale Road, and I've got a question for you, and I thank you uh, for all your service that you do for the town. Um, we've had the house for a long time. Um, I'm up here full time. Um, I'm an academic. I was a curator at the Clark for a long time in Williamstown. And I'm writing an article on Norman Rockwell's freedom of speech uh, picture. Uh, it's the 75th anniversary of um, Roosevelt's freedom of, of uh, four freedoms of uh, speech. And I'd like to ask your help. Um, the freedom of speech picture depicts a town meeting that occurs. Mr. Allen, can you yes. this, this budget discussion? Oh, no, no. Well, yes, actually it is. Um, so to the financial aspect of it? <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. Um, the freedom of speech um, picture uh, depicts the town meeting that appropriated the money to build this building in 1941. Um, and the question that I have, since I'm researching this, is um, if you have, if any of you knew Rockwell, um, I, don't, I don't believe that this is related to the budget okay. discussion yeah. we're going to have now. Yeah. Okay. There'll be a few in a few minutes. You can have this conversation. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's Uh, a couple questions for Superintendent Long. Um, I can I assume or can we assume that your budget was within the cap at 46? Yes. We met that. Yes. And so there's no penalty. No we penalty. We have no penalty. We there there are two cap numbers. Um, 
One was given us to us in August. It was about eighty-six thousand dollars was all that we could spend this year, and then another one came out in January that was at ninety-five, about ninety-three thousand. And our new spending is eighty-two thousand and change. Okay. So well, next question, though, in, in, in obtaining that, and, and thank you for doing that. Uh, but in, in uh, reaching that goal, did you have to dip into the reserve fund? No. Really? Really. Thank you for that too. Um, one other question. Tomorrow, you, as a longtime resident of Lebanon, will go to the polls. Would you share with us what the total school budget in Lebanon is? Oh, golly. Um, I actually read it this weekend, and I don't know. But I, I can tell you this, like like most of you in this audience, I noticed that their tax rate will be down by about five cents. <laughs> That's what I was looking at, just probably like you do too. Right. And why I ask that is just a Black River High School and right. their school system is a very similar to ours. Yes. And amongst a lot of other schools. Uh, my research tells me that our true cost of fuel, not what you put on the board. Okay, if you take our total monthly enrollment, divide it by 72 plus, uh, it's one of the highest in the state. And I think I, I think most of you are cognizant of that. I'd like you to continue to be. And down the road, it's okay to say no. Okay. It's okay to say no. The school board. Um, I watched one of the school board meeting last week. I think it was one of your meetings this month. It was about a week ago. I watched it on television. And for the better part of one hour, you folks spent the entire time talking about spending. And one of the things was the school bus. Now we need cameras on the school bus. Okay, I didn't hear a thing about academics or students. So, thank you for listening.
you know, what you have, what you budget. Salary, you're right, is probably a misleading term. It's really not a salary, it's an hourly rate. Because, yeah, because overtime doesn't really go. Away. You're correct. So on the top of that page, too, you have two lines that are listed for contract services. Mm -hmm. One's for 450 and one's for 5,000. What's the difference? It's under it's yeah, okay. um, what page are we talking about? Here? Page 36, 36 is the top. There's two lines that say contracted services with two different amounts. I'm just wondering what they are and why they weren't combined into one. I gotta get my details out. I can't tell from this off the top of my head. It's a code in the issue. Hold on. Okay. Just a different code. Yeah, it's a different code services. for a different service. Or three thirty or three sixty. Or is that same number? I just can't. I don't have my right. details. Right. I, I, I do. Regular budget. Oh, contract services. Okay. 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 Okay.
and you can identify it more easily. <laughs> I know, especially with the contract when we were sitting here, and I was looking at it too, and, and um, knew that there was a logical reason for the two contracted services, but I had to go and look on the notes that I had in order to, yeah. My other question has to go with the expenses for heating oil. Three years ago, I came and questioned why there was $40,000 heating oil expense for this for this facility here and $40,000 for the elementary school. But the elementary school had asked for a 25% increase that year. I asked specifically if there was a problem with the boiler at the elementary school. The principal replied, no, not that I know of. I said, well, why do we have a 25% increase in a request for fuel oil for the elementary school? The high school is not asking for an increase. This year, I see the elementary school is in the $40,000 range, asking for more money when fuel oil prices have dropped significantly this year. We're enjoying the benefit of that. But the high school is in the $88,000 to $93,000 range all of a sudden. From three years ago, it was only in the books at $40,000. What happened to that number? It caused the high school to nearly double in three years. When fuel oil rates have gone down, the elementary school remains the same. We've also asked for an increase in the fuel oil expenses for this year. Uh, actually, a $1,000 increase for next year. But this year, compared to the actuals, you were something like $8,000 under what you budgeted. In exp actual expenses came in $8,000 under on your fuel expenses. That was two years ago when it was a high fuel cost. We've done nothing but down. I know you get a contract price a lot better than us folks out here on the street. But there have been some major declines in prices. Why are these numbers only dropping $1,000 at the high school when we have significant fuel cost reductions? Same goes for gasoline and many of the fuels that we use at these schools and facilities. Well, one of the things when we were budgeting, and as you can see, the high school did go down by $4,000 and the elementary school's gone down 1000 is yes, this year we have market decreases, which is great, and it's gonna save us a lot of money this winter, but as you well know, it's really hard to project what next winter will bring. So usually what we try to do is track a pattern and next year, again, we'll look at the fuel oil prices, plus, well, the solar's electricity, but we're also looking at getting some things done to the boilers, which may save us more, and then we'll be able to reduce a little bit more. But we did reduce it some, um, and we're tracking it. And, you know, maybe we could have reduced it more, but- $8,000 we in one year on the actuals, and yet you still ask for more the next year, in 2016. That's the 15 actuals, what they came in and what you budgeted. Yep. They came in $8,000 less, and that was a pretty high heat year. They came in less okay. and less and less, and you're still asking for more and more and more. $500,000 in savings in this budget. There's a lot of extra in here. I said, go for it. I'm all with you on it. I know there's $500,000 extra in this budget. Didn't show up. And you handed us some time over to report. What happened to that $500,000 in savings if you thought we could find us? Act 46. Act 46. I got it. Yeah. In the elementary operation and maintenance, it says anticipated roof loan. Now, we know we put on a new roof at Fisher, which was necessary. And we spent, according to your sinking funds, $60,000 on that. Well, what, you what page are you on, Marine? Oh, I'm sorry, page 37. And if you see, um, FY16, anticipated roof loan, $50,000. 
And then if you flip back to page 59, under city funds, it says roof repair, 60389 And it says high school roof, but I thought it was the elementary roof that we repaired. We repaired both. We repaired both? This summer, yep. The high school was taken out of the sinking funds, and the elementary was a loan. Okay, so if we repaired the roof this year under the regular budget for elementary, why do we need another $50,000 again next year? investment in technology is not only in the infrastructure in the school, but into uh, in allowing students the ability, the, the opportunity to have, um, you know, eventually we'd love to have a one-to-one. -one. Every student has access to their uh, dedicated laptop or, or tablet or whatever, what have you, so they, they always have access to the information that they need to do their best work in class. Um, Deanne and Tim can speak more to the Chromebooks that they have available and how often they're checked out every class all day long. They're using, they're using the technology that we have available and we want to build on that. Um, as far as guidance goes, uh, personal learning plans uh, are a huge initiative. It's a requirement of the state that every student have one. Uh, we started with grades seven and nine. Uh, I think we're pretty much ahead of the curve. Uh, Dr. Millington can speak more to that as far as um, you know, how quickly we can get every student in school with a personal learning plan. Those are student-driven goals about, uh, you know, what do they want to learn about? What do they enjoy? Where do they see themselves in 5, 10, 20 years? Um, and, and how do we tailor their education to those goals? So that's something uh, that the guidance office is, is very well invested in. Um, in addition to the online uh, courses that are offered through the Vermont uh, the Virtual Learning Collaborative, Again, if we don't offer a class here, we have, we have the capability to do it via VTEL or online. Students have a, a lot of opportunities. And then again, the juniors and seniors that uh, can participate in dual enrollment. And I think Andrew probably did that when he was in school. Um, it's a great opportunity for, for our students. Is there any increase in um, technology <coughs> learning? You know, like the basics, the coding and the, the underpinnings of all of that stuff so that kids are better able to take care, like take advantage of, of those in college. 
you know, not just learning how to use Excel and Microsoft Word and the internet, but how to create those things. Learn how to program. Yes. That would be a curriculum question for our technology director. I don't you know that she's here, so. I don't know, Tamara or Deanne, can you answer any of those questions? We also have three sets of uh, Chromebooks that are used. It's amazing all the time. When I walk into your classrooms, they're constantly being used. And we have three computer labs. I think we're doing pretty well. Final warned order of business tonight at the school meeting is to tra transact any further business found necessary and proper when met. Is there 
any other business related to the school that would need to be brought before the assembly. I would just like to thank the school board for their hard uh, work. I, I've often said well, I'd rather... Give him the mic. <laughs> <laughs> give him the, no, no, give him the mic. I've often uh, thought that being a dog catcher would be a more uh, appreciated job, so I just want to thank the school board. free. We own it.
Yeah, so the effect on the school budget will be steady for the next few years, then. You can anticipate that. Yeah, we can say that. The yeah. cost of the sewer and water. Okay, thank you. For water. Well, it depends. Depends on the enrollment, right? As our enrollment's gone up, we've used more water and we deal with more water at the other end, right? What comes in goes out. So, you know, our enrollment goes up by 40 students and we're using more water. It's the same rate, but it's, uh, we get billed more. We also have three-year-olds now in our building, which is a, a more water use group of kids. <laughs> Sorry, it is. Both ways, in and out. Both ways. <laughs> Zero sum game. Are there any other business you brought before the assembly? John, do we get anything from Happy Days for the sewage? Do, are they in the same thing like they used to? Yes. Be? Yes. We, we get a payment or yep. in that bill. Back here. Speaking of water, in view of what is just... Just a moment, please wait for Hi. Speaking of water, my name is Sandy, and I live up on Water Hill Road. Um, in view of what has just uh, come to light in Lucy Falls and North Bennington, has water been tested here for PFOA? Short of the matter of the We request the test. So the answer to the question is yes, water samples have been taken and they're being tested now. And we don't know the results yet. They said about a week, 10 days. Thank you. So if we do have other questions on the water company, perhaps this is the best address to the town site. Will you post this up on the town website when you're done? If they come back and meet, so we can all see them. The results, will you post the results so we can all see them? Thank you. The website is not working right now. Don't go on it because it's infected with something. You just put a billboard on and stand yeah. out in front. You should go on that. Yeah. You should have a board or something. But don't go on the website. Funny. How many students do we have in special education? So the, the question was, how many students do we have in special education? Um, roughly 74. 74. Out of those 74, probably 70 of them are eligible for Special Olympics. Why aren't they, the kids from Arlington in Special Olympics? Um, special Olympics is a private program. Um, depending on the facility, I'm going to roughly say off my head, maybe seven to ten students would be eligible. Just 10 out of the 70? No, it's a special Olympics criteria, yes. But it was a large encompassing um, yes. pattern and over as I'm involved in. Yeah. I wonder why there's no kids in America to get special Olympics. Um, I'd be happy to look into that. Uh, I know there's a robust program between Bennington and I know the Manchester people that are in. Yeah. Yes. Ten seconds if I keep. So the motion before the assembly is uh, not to adjourn, but to recess until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, we're validating here at the Arlington Memorial High School Gymnasium. Any discussions? If not, all those in favor of recessing until set time, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Or recess. Even at the, the town portion of the meeting tonight, um, and warrant order of business. Um, Representative Steve Barry is here. We'd like to address the assembly. So before we get formally underway, I'd like to uh, have a motion from the assembly to allow Representative Barry to address the assembly. And second by the Is there any discussion? Then Representative Barry. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to just begin by saying it's an honor to represent you in the General Assembly in Montpelier. My particular 
responsibilities focus largely in the House Human Services Committee. That's where I spend most of my time. And we have some guiding principles by which we conduct our business there. And I'd just like to share that with you because it gives you an idea of, of how we focus ourselves when we get into every morning when we get there in, uh, in our committee. And this lasts throughout the whole day. And I've pretty much taken these uh, principles to uh, on, on uh, just the sense that this is a way for me to conduct business while as long as I'm in the, I'm in the state house. Ensuring that vulnerable Vermonters are safe and protected. Ensuring structures are in place to assist Vermonters in moving out of poverty. Ensuring that problems that can lead to even greater costs to the state are addressed or prevented. Ensuring that all Vermonters have access to services and supports that will help enable them to attain the highest level of independence and realize their potential. So in order to do this, what we have been focusing on last year largely was uh, protecting children. As you know, that was a, uh, some terrible incidents in the state of Vermont. And this year, we've had to look at the protection of our social workers. Um, these are, are um, issues that are very difficult to deal with, but we're the committee that deals with those issues and then tries to put the protections into place so that uh, people can live decent, good lives, and, and so that's the focus of our committee. I've been working on H-112, an act relating to access to financial records in adult protective services that seeks to protect seniors from fraud and elder abuse. That will be passing out of committee probably this coming week, uh, and I'll be presenting that on the floor of the assembly. Uh, H-171, an act relating to restrictions on the use of electronic cigarettes. This act seeks to treat e-cigarettes as we treat tobacco products and seeks to strengthen the Vermont non-smoking norm. Uh, when we have our committee meetings, we hear from all sides. So persons who have a very strong feeling about something pro or con are able to come and sit in testimony, and we will take testimony until it is exhausted. We will have heard it, and heard it, and heard it again, and so on, until we vote it out of committee. But that's how we do our process. Most of the time, although we're Republicans and Democrats and progressives in our committee, we generally vote out of committee uh, by a score of about 11, 0, 10, 2. We really do a good job, I think, before we bring it to the floor, that everybody understands that both sides of the aisle have a chance to really put their input in it and that they have, their voices are extremely important. Another one is act related to Medicaid rates for home and community-based services and home delivered meals as reimbursables. That has to do with your meal on wheels. There have been some cutbacks, as you know, this has not been an easy time. My first biennium uh, last year uh, when I was with you for the first time, I, I was I had walking pneumonia, uh, much, feeling much better this year, obviously. But I have to tell you, uh, we have to deal with some huge things, cutbacks that came from the administration. That is from the governor's office. And a lot of them are very unsafe, but we have to deal with it. And so we deal with it the best we can. One of the things that's come up is possibly <coughs> cutting meal on wheels. I am working hard to make sure that that is not going to happen. Um, so these are the types of things I have a, a sheet here that will give you my report and also I have a fact sheet on the state of Vermont that you can also refer to that is on the table. Um, one of the things that I've spent quite a bit of time on is veterans home. I've been down there a lot this past summer and into the fall. Uh, I have a bill uh, that asks for the funding for 2017 from the veterans home in the state of Vermont. And I have a resolution to go to both houses, which is going to be taken to our congressional delegates, uh, which asks the federal government to do more for the state of Vermont. We pay between five and six million dollars per year to keep the veterans home open. Uh, the federal government tends to pay, spends approximately 600 billion dollars uh, in military. Um, my sense is that when military 
veterans come back, that they should be treated with the utmost respect, that they should not be second-class citizens. We give them a lot of lip service, but we don't put our money where our mouth should be. And so we need to be really hold them their feet to the fire to make sure that those who have served get the benefits which they're entitled to. So I've been working really hard on that with both sides of the aisle, making sure that our veterans are, are served and protected and the post-traumatic stress disorder and all those things that the veterans are having to deal with now that they can be uh, focused on and that we can help them. Um, there are many more things that I'm involved in. You'll see on these sheets that I give you that we will be having, uh, you know, you can call me whenever you want. My home phone is on there. My email is on there. So please, I have people who, have, who do reach out from Arlington uh, that, that set up appointments with me, that email me, and I really think it's important. I want to hear your voice. I represent you. So if you have something that you want to have taken up that is important to you, whether it be marijuana or, or what, whatever it is, please let me know. That's how I can determine how best to represent you when you let me know what you want, what you need, what you feel is important for you. Not what's important for me, what's important for you. I represent you. Okay, so please, uh, Cynthia Browning is on her way over here. Uh, she, I, I passed her in Sandgate, and then I saw her in Sunderland, and she's going to be here in Arlington, but she's here a lot anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she'll be here in a little while, and I'm going to be off to a, a, a school board meeting in Manchester. But please let me know if there's something. I have a lot more things that I'm doing. You'll get a little bit of that in the uh, town meeting report I have and you'll see a little bit about what's going on in terms of the state of Vermont uh, in the other sheet that I've, that I've made available. So um, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. So the warrant order of business for this evening is on page 6 of, of the annual report.
Is there a motion to dispense with the reading of the warning? And a second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion before the assembly? If not, then signify adopting the motion by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Harris. Article 1, to hear and act upon the report of the town officers. These written reports are set forth on pages 14 to 20 and 37 to 51 of the annual report. Is there a motion to accept the reports of the town officers as set forth in the annual report? Once we get the motion open, we'll allow you to ask your question. Is there a second? Is there any discussion on the motion to allow the reports? Please. My name is Dave Nakeborn. Dave, the microphone's coming right to you. My name is Dave Nakeborn from the Arlington Director of Park Committee. And on page 16, under the theme of I font, you will see that we see from the Arlington Director of Park Inc. donation, $42,812. That money was given to the town for the uh, renovation of the basketball and tennis court. And so my question is, why is it listed here and not in the park budget where it should belong? So we, <coughs> I'll follow that a little bit. Is our articles of association do not allow us to donate to some other fund like that. Our donation has to go. <coughs> Yeah, we'll work something out. 
I guess I have two questions to, to go on to that. I don't see where the park report is in here. If someone knows and I can look at that um, of what he was speaking of, Dave was speaking about. And two, if we've been working on this for two years to get the basketball court and the tennis court done, um, why, and the, and the funds came in, why didn't the park give the money to pay the bills at the time when they were due? Linda was saying, I'm just trying to follow this, because Linda was saying she didn't have the money in the fund, the bills came in and needed to be paid. But then the park had the money for the expense but they didn't give it to the town on time? Or did the donations come in after the fact? I'm just trying to figure out why why it wasn't paid with the money that was there, as Dave said, to go to the town. No, they only came to, to the town. Uh, partially paid came up, partially paid with the donation. Um, as far as Dave's problem, we'll have to go back and just and just look at that as far as dates go and stuff. But, and I think we can solve that. But the parking right money did come in. So, it's a matter of. Yes, when the project was complete, we made our donations. So we need to understand what the need. Park, but he made it in a timely manner. Yeah, we did.
No. Okay. Public funds. What you're seeing here, those caps, where the zeros all the way through that. This is part of our fund accounting software that the bookkeeping part takes care of. And um, we don't use this, but we print it out. And that figure is probably from two years ago. The figure's been changed because we just zero. You know, we aren't using it. But it probably was put in. So that's what it's in. And his books are somewhere in the park. Yes, it's just that that number I don't believe was changed. You can see use any other. You don't use it anymore. It's there for when we make that big one.
So again, on page 22, under administration, the first four, the first four items are the the chair, the selectman, the treasurer, and the town clerk. On page 23, I'm just going to reference the last two digits. If you go down to line 17 and 19, there you find the interim administrator and the moderator. Moving on to Article 3, the city of the town will vote to have all taxes paid to the town treasurer as provided by law. Tax bills to be posted by September 4th, 2016, and payment to be in the hands of the treasurer on or before November 4th, 2016. Oh, okay. Let me restate that.
The capital fund for articles 6, 17 and 18 are set forth at the top of page 25. Balance the appropriation are set forth just below that on page 25. If you carefully compare the articles as warranted with these the appropriations found on page 25, you'll note that a couple of the uh, a couple of the requests are in the morning, which we'll be voting on tomorrow, are slightly higher than what the select board budget. Um, those are included on the warning on the ballots because of uh, petitions, voter petitions that are signed that uh, raise the amount to be voted up on tomorrow. So if we do a little bit of math, if we take $55,036, and two hundred and one thousand nine hundred twenty-nine dollars, and subtract it from the proposed budget. We have an amount of one million sixty-seven thousand sixteen dollars to approve tonight. And I, I guess also draw your attention to the summary of the budget on page. Twenty-one. Nice. Okay. Um, so we have again budget actual for 2015 amount to be raised by taxes 2015. We have 2016 proposed budget and 2016 proposed amount to be raised by taxes. The there is a, a, a typo here that this has to draw up to your attention. Uh, changes the numbers by $20. Uh, in the general fund, the number 498,225 should be 498,205. And the resulting bottom line, 1 million three hundred. $24,001 should be $1,323,981. So again, if we take that as our budget and we subtract the salaries that have been approved under Article 2nd and the appropriations to be voted upon tomorrow, the amount that we're voting on tonight is $1,000,000. $67,016. So is there a motion from the assembly to accept the budget as proposed by the select? So And a second. Okay. Is there any discussion on the budget? Yes, okay. Um, let's start counting. Here on the floor. Sorry, the question is, is oh, uh, the Article 40, the partnership. Um, that was an article that was cited by the petition of the voters. I'm not sure if there's anybody here to speak to it tonight. Um, that's an article, discussions of the articles uh, would be best left to other business when we get to that point. It's a very good question. Um, that we postponed it until then. Uh, Darren. So back to the question on the salaries. Uh, the IRS and the on-call for 24 hours. Is there a specific place that you're looking at that doesn't have a report? Part of it's the water department. Because a salary of $50,000 is part of the water department. Just more of a statement that I find it kind of sad that our calendar, our 
second helper makes considerably less than what our new water company had is going to be making. <coughs> and that's not clear. And that uh, other one is on page 13, what the second helper makes. I just find it very sad that he makes. Okay, let's let me just uh, confer it further for just a yep. second. The best answer I've got is that we looked at two items. Uh, the Arlington Water Company has been paying in taxes approximately $18,000 a year. Okay, so that's a loss of revenue. To compensate for that, the town uh, hydrant, we took that out of the budget. After 2016, that number is zero in budget. So the taxpayers will not be paying for that service. So those two numbers, if you put them together, are six thousand dollars different. But we look at the loss income, uh, balance it out with loss of uh, expenses, with reduced expenses. So the taxpayers are not contributing. They are still contributing to the school. They're still contributing to for some town building, but not the high. Yes. On the same page 24, the emergency management, is there a reason why it's gone up so much to $12,000? Is there some program or hybrid that we need that we
granted. The question about that, why would you need a, a generator in that mountain? What is not I can answer that and why not. Uh, anytime the power goes out, the systems we've got there, the technology that we're running today, we shut down. We cannot, the town cannot operate. So for sure, for two or three hours, that's fine. But if we get into a situation where we lose power for a week, we've got a problem. The town cannot function. Would it be cheaper to rent a generator for a week then? No. I, well, that's just my thought. Uh, the other side of that is that the town office and is set up, is, is equipped with radios, all the things that are needed for long-term EOC. So that would be the place we have an emergency operation center also. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, Rob. Uh, Linda. What's it? Just what's the lifespan of the generator? Lifespan of the generator. I mean. 50 years. 50 years. Thank you. Susan. Could you tell me on page 24 what the BCSWA line is? For the new budget, it's got $12,500. I knew that would be it. <laughs> Bennington County Solid Waste Alliance. I think we've talked in the past about these new regulations that come down from Montpelier as far as recycling and all of that. This is a county-wide organization that's been put together to deal with all of that. This is our fee for the year as a member of that organization. It will pay bills, it will pay contractors, it will pay everything we have to do to comply with that. So that's different than the landfills, uh, solid waste recycling. That's our landfill. What's just like 4 above that for 20000 20, $20,000. Yeah, the 20000 is directly to pay for recycling. If you take your material to the landfill for recycling and you don't pay, the town pays. So that's what that number is in there for. That covers that. change from year to year. Uh, we've got a five-year budget. It'll probably go down a little bit next year. This is the first year start, but it will be a year every year. It's new. Thank you. How many members in the alliance? <coughs> Question is how many members are in the solid waste alliance? Thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. Solid waste budget has gone up. <coughs> Operationally, what has changed and will change? Regulation. Uh, no. Act 148 was passed, I think, two years ago now. Uh, it went into effect last July. And basically, what it does, it sets specific goals for recycling. The state wants the state of Vermont to recycle most everything, and there's costs that go along with that. Uh, we're going to be recycling more. The markets are disappearing for recyclables. recyclables. So we're hauling them all over the countryside trying to get rid of them. Uh, that's a cost. So all the costs associated with getting rid of your trash are going up pretty dramatically. And this is just the town's trash. Well, it's, it's yours. Okay, but we pay a fee to the seller. Yep. And so this is on top of that. It is. This is what the town pays is almost 100% recycled. Recycle. Because you take your stuff that you can recycle up there, or if your hauler picks it up at your house, he can't charge you. But once it gets up there and it's moved, we pay for moving. Okay. And 
most of the time we have to pay to get rid of it because it's not worth anything when they get it to the destination. So it's a no win.
Is this on the yellow board? Go ahead. You said you're doing away with the community garden? Um, yeah, I, mean, I grew a lot of vegetables. I had some Girl Scouts and other people. We did grow vegetables for the school summer lunch program, but it just became too much for me. I couldn't, there wasn't enough interest in the community. I think that many people who really want a garden already had a garden at their house, and some people who wanted to do it can't really do that kind of work. So it just became too much. It doesn't mean we couldn't put it back at some point, but right now um, there has not been the kind of interest in the community beyond just me doing it, and I just couldn't do it physically. I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, what did you just say about pain? We're, um, we're going to take the field and try to restore it as a productive hay field. Someone did hay it one year, two years ago. They, they hay it and took the hay. I know when you started um, the talks about purchasing the Yellow Barn and the things you're going to do, there was a thing called the Yellow Barn Committee and there were people on that that were supposed to be fundraising and as a committee bringing the select board what we would use for it. And I'm not saying, you know, I appreciate everything you've done, but I've asked about it in the past. Does that committee still exist? Because I think it's a good idea to get that going again. We were told, you know, a committee and everybody would help to decide it. Uh, there's a few of us that would love to help fundraise and do things at the barn. I, I think that one, um, first of all, I want to say we did not purchase the Yellow Barn property. We got a grant from the Vermont Housing Foundation. I, I just think that's very important. We did not purchase it. We got a grant. And we got it because of the river access and the pressure on the river access on the other side of the river. So um, the Yellow Barn Committee, we did have an advisory committee on that. And then one issue we had is the state has these new open meeting laws and minutes laws and everything. And we kind of ran into a problem of having that committee meeting and then did it have to have an agenda and minutes and did it mean, you know, had to be warned. And so basically this level of kind of has taken on that role. I think that on an informal basis, anybody who's interested in it, please contact me and we can have an informal group that then brings proposals to the select board. That's what I've been trying to do. So I would really like to hear about anybody who would um, has ideas about how to use it better and make it more productive for townspeople. What is, I, I guess I don't understand open meeting laws. You know, if you were gonna have a meeting at the Yellow Barn, it's not a big issue to warn a meeting and have people meet and let whoever wants to come. I, I don't see that as a stumbling block. And I also thought, I know you got a grant for the barn, but I thought you had to get from, you know, the town voted to say you wanted to do this. That's what I meant by purchasing it, I guess. But, you know, I, I just want to strongly suggest that, you know, to move forward and to have a dog park and do things, you know, there's, a, there's quite a few of us that would be willing to pitch in and, you know, it's not that hard to warn and just, Throwing that out there to you guys. I, I appreciate the suggestion, and I'll take that under advisement, and I'll um, I'll be in touch. But I think that um, the best the best thing that we worked out is for people to work on ideas and then bring it to the select board, and that that seems to be the way to go forward. But whether there would be another way to return to a different committee, we could uh, think about it. But earlier on, the board decided that since it had the management, that's where the discussion should rest. But let's um, let's let's uh, let's pursue this you know, okay. because I'm I've put a lot of time and effort into getting the grants and doing the activities there, and I really believe in its potential as an asset to the townspeople, and that's what I want, and I know that's what you want too. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, question yeah. regarding the sidewalk. The sidewalk study was done with the connector from the town office into the island. And I was wondering if any of that is budgeted for 2016, and if not, is there a projected schedule for when that may happen? Okay, so the question is about the sidewalk extension uh, from the town offices down to the rec park, and wondering if that is part of the budget, and if not, so I'm really We have been trying to finish up the actual um, study and right at the moment, I think I did get a message from VCRs the other day, the uh, general manager has been working on it. We kind of, very simply, we kind of got hung up with it running and to And to try to come up with a workable solution, like in that short stretch, that 
served the purpose of the best and did not harm the business there, which is kind of a balancing act. Uh, we haven't really come up with a good solution for that yet. So that's that's where we're at. Uh, as far as 2016, no, we won't be able to have done that. If we can get a final plan put together for the state, that would go in 2017. As far as grant, probably work to be done in 2018 or 2019. So it's still working out there.
so you can see it now. We are asking the total region wide for $75,000 in public funds. How will that be used? We will be expanding our staff with someone experienced in economic development so that we take a real assessment of this whole region and package it so that it becomes competitive as a place to locate your business, to grow your business. We want to uh, establish some more venture capital globally so we can help some of our small business folks expand. And on the other side, tourism marketing, it's no secret that there have been new hotels around our region, but we have some very competitive properties right here. We need to make sure that Elizabeth grows and the West Mountain Inn grows and they stay competitive with all the attractions that we have here. So that's the way this will be. The money will be spent. Uh, there will be two additional staff people, one in economic development and one in tourism marketing. Happy to take questions. Yes. Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Paula. Can you explain the private side of the partnership? You're talking about the public one, but it used to be 18,000, but there's a private side. Private, private investment. Uh, we actually rolled this out in September to um, the region, and we attracted $80,000 in seed money to get us started to allow us to do some outbound marketing that we had not done before. Most of those private funds come from uh, companies, corporations that believe, you know, we can't, we can't wait on others to do it for us. We really need to be proactive and out in the market. Hildings and lots, lots of our attractions have been supportive of this, our ski uh, areas. Yes. Uh, I, I've been here six years. I'm told it's around 14, 15 years since the Arlington Chamber, and maybe Ann Weber may have been in the leadership then, uh, joined the Manchester Chamber. So in those that past decade, what has Arlington benefited from your chamber? Because everything you're saying right now is new hotels, and skiing, and the Hildeen, which is not in Arlington. What has the chamber done for Arlington that we're going to give $3,700 for to help build our town. Well, I think Arlington uh, has had in the past, I mean, there's been some decline in lodging in Arlington. We need to beef that up. We need to uh, bring people for, you know, more of our attractions. I mean, the gentleman talking about Norman Rockwell over here, that's one of our big attractions. We need to get more people who are coming to see Norman's attic. We need more people, you know, down at the Sugar Shack. I mean, all of those things, and we're, you know, we represent 18 towns, so when the visitor comes into where we are, in the chamber, you know, what can we do here? We send them all around that region. Uh, that's our, that's our mission, and we'll continue to do that, continue to help grow it, and we think as a group of towns with stronger investment that we can bring more to all of our towns. Yes, sir. I just have to go along with Susan. I have to agree. And uh, anytime I look at the Manchester Chamber of Commerce, the only thing mentioned is Manchester. There's no Arlington on there at all. Zero. We are That's been for years. In Manchester in the mountains, and all of our publications carry the names of 18 towns and communities. All of our membership is throughout 18 towns. Uh, Manchester, no question about it, is the business hub of this region. But the people who work in Manchester, the people who take advantage of our attractions throughout, are from all of our towns. And we need to grow all of our towns. Yeah, I just don't see this as being of any benefit to Arlington. It's just an expansion of the Elizabeth? Chamber. Get on your device and you look where you're going to go. 
send their employees in. So you're very, very wrong if you think that Manchester and the Chamber doesn't do anything for us because that's my livelihood. And we donate to anybody that asks for anything, school, church, whatever. Well, I have to disagree. I mean, if you look up Arlington Chamber of Commerce or Arlington, Vermont, if you look up Chamber of Commerce for Arlington, you go to the Manchester Mountains website, Arlington isn't even mentioned. If you go to the website, if you look at the top, all of the towns are represented. But none of, our, none of what's here, like the If you click on Arlington, it will take you to the West Mountain, it will take you to the Sugar Shack, it will take you to the Arlington. And those, obviously, uh, there are certain things that aren't represented because they're not members of the chamber. But anybody coming here that asks us anything about our towns is directed to where they can find resources. It's, it's a very hard thing to represent 18 towns and communities. Uh, seven days a week, we have two and a half employees currently. We spend $40,000 a year marketing this region. That's not just here, not just Manchester, that's the region. We're marketing cycling, we're marketing fishing, we're pushing skiing, we're pushing all of our recreation parks, which we have all over the region. So, you know, all those things are assets that allow us to do a good job for the region. Paul. I think we didn't mention, first of all, I remember the Arlington Chamber because we had to dissolve because we were the same board for 10 years just rotating our positions. So we had that little thing in town and we realized that we just couldn't keep doing it for the same reasons. We didn't have any market money. We didn't could pay for it with dues. So we actually voted to go with Manchester because of proximity between Bennington and Manchester. Many people belong to both. What I wanted to know was when everybody undertook this study, they deliberately turned it the partnership. And believe me, we've taken a lot of flack for that because people in Manchester are saying, well, we're the middle and people in Arlington Saying, but we're important too. And then people in Sutherland and, and, and Shaftesbury. But the partnership means exactly that. There's all this economic development membership, all this academic, I'm sorry, getting things up. Economic development information being done by so many different groups. That stuff's going to sit on a shelf like I've seen it do for 26 years unless somebody takes the reins and uses it to actually give our kids who moved away reasons to come back here good jobs and be able to work. So that's the economic development piece. And Bert is absolutely right. With 300 new rooms being built in Manchester, the trickle down, I hate that term, but the trickle down from the people staying in Manchester, they only have certain directions to go and we want them to come down here. We want them to see our lanes. We want them to go beyond here, even to Bennington and beyond. So unless somebody takes the reins of that, and that's why it was decided that it would be called the partnership for now, because we need to partner with lots of people. There's strength in numbers and much more resource that way. These things only succeed if they're regional because we're a collection of small towns. None of us individually have those kinds of funds. And just to give you one example of how regional and cooperative and collaborative has worked, uh, look at the Shires Byway. Look at the Shires Byway and the Shires brand that has knitted together a certain part of this region. We send people all day long from the Shires Byway begins at the Massachusetts border and comes all the way up into Manchester Center and is going to go further in the next plan out into East Dorset and Dorset. Uh, you know, these things have to be done together. And, you know, I think this is a moment in time that if you read the papers, there is economic development, tourism marketing, let's make our area the number one tourism destination in the state of Vermont, let's make Southern Vermont the gateway so that nobody has to say, let's go on up to Stowe, let's go on up to the Northeast Kingdom. This is a chance for us to do this. I don't know that it comes around again. It's on the ballot. We spent two months being in all of our 18 communities. We visited early on with the select board early in January. We've been at it ever since. So we would appreciate your support tomorrow.
Thank you. Is there any other business to be brought before the assembly tonight? And did you want to? Hi, I'm Ken Nicholson. Um, the Arlington Community Club asked me to make a presentation, and I said, 10 o'clock, these people are going to all be half asleep. I said, let's get, get the business done. I said, I, I need some advice. So I went for my, my neighbor, Tim Williams. I said, Tim, what are you going to do there? And he said, you know, I, here it is. He said, when you're giving a speech, it should always be long enough to cover the subject but short enough to be interesting. Didn't you, don't you, didn't you learn that one? A speech should be long enough to cover the subject, but short enough to be interesting. So let me go right to where, what I have to say and we'll get it over with. On behalf of the Arlington Community Club, I want to ask your support for Article 21 for an appropriation of 3000 3, to the Arlington Community Club. The Arlington Community Club was the sole responsibility for maintaining the Arlington Community House, sometimes known as the Brick House, <coughs> located on Main Street in the center of the village between the Town Hall and the Arlington Inn. It was built in 1829. It's 187 years old. The Canfield family bought the house and Martha Canfield was the primary occupant for many years. Dorothy Canfield spent summers in the brick house with her Aunt Maddie. In 1947, the Canfield family, led by Dorothy, formed the Arlington Community Club and turned the ownership of the, club, of the house to the club with the following mandates. Number one, maintain the building and make it available for community activities free of charge to any citizen of the Arlington, Sunderland, and Sandgate community. Secondly, to provide space for the Martha Canfield Library. As you can see in the town report on page 53, the old house is still standing tall, and in, in uh, last year, over 300 different organizations met at the community house and represented 25 different organizations. That's almost once a day someone is using that facility. Over the past 187 years, the heating system has evolved from fireplaces in each room to coal and then now to fuel oil. Some of you may remember Lester Brush, who lived in one of the two upstairs apartments, uh, made an untold number of trips down the stairs to, his, uh, to the basement to feed the old coal furnace. It was a steady, it was a steam system, and there were times when the banging of the pipes would drown out conversations downstairs in the meeting rooms. I believe the community house and Don Brown were the last of the coal <coughs> users in the town of Arlington. The present oil-fired system is at least 40 years old and requires constant attention and expensive repairs. At the present time, we are in the process of raising about $30,000 to replace the old steam pipes, the oil burner with a modern, high-efficiency oil-fired hot water system. The town, in the town report on page 53 has much more information about the club and its activities. Give us a call, and a member of the board will be happy to give you a tour of the old house. I think you will be pleasantly surprised. Arlington has always been generous, uh, town of Arlington has always been generous in supporting the community club, and we hope you will help us again in passing Article 21 on tomorrow's ballot. Thank you for the Arlington Community Club. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, as far as what you'll be voting on the articles tomorrow, obviously there are several of those funds in there that are capital funds. Uh, the 
board feels very strongly that those are needed. Uh, the other point to make on page 25, the list of appropriations that are there, they are there because we received a petition. When we receive a petition, we have to put them on the ballot. That does not mean that they have blanket approval by the board. That's just a message I want to go out. Uh, just to touch on some other items, uh, I think as Dave mentioned earlier, you're aware that there was quite a lot of work done at the park last year. We revoked the tennis and basketball courts. Uh, I hope we've got a lot of tennis players here that want to come down and use those courts. They're brand new and we want people down there. If we can see where, there's, where there is going to be some usage, the lighting system isn't the best now, but we can work on that and try to make some nighttime facilities down there. Uh, a message I want to get out very strongly, the softball field, that was mentioned earlier, it's being used as a dog park. That's going to stop in the very near future. Uh, we, have, we have, unfortunately, several people that can't take the time to pick up after their animals. Uh, kids are going to be down there on that field pretty quick, so we're going to be locking that gate probably within the next week. The yellow barn becomes an option. There's nothing formal down there yet, but you know, if, if somebody's got some ideas, we can certainly work on that. Uh, <coughs> the water department, let me just touch on that for a couple minutes, and maybe we can answer some other questions here too. The town formally closed on their Water company assets on the 23rd. Uh, the town now owns the water system. Uh, at the present time, payments can, can be made to uh, either the water company or you can start making the town either way. If anybody needs to write a check, they've got a bill that's due, uh, write those out and, and they can either be mailed to the same box number, the 462, or if somebody wants to stop and drop them off in the town hall, We'll accept payments in the town hall. Uh, just the message that needs to get out on that one. The town will start putting the bills out in the next quarter, which will be probably the middle of April, I think, where we'll start billing on behalf of the water system. And between now and then, we're going to be looking at delinquent accounts. We've got quite a few out there that are over 120 days. We will be looking at those and coming up with a plan as to how we deal with them. I think we've got a pretty good plan in, play, a plan in place, but we need to refine it a little bit. Uh, uh, as far as, if anybody's got any specific questions as far as their accounts go, where they're at today, uh, we've got all the paperwork at the office. Linda, somebody will be able to help you with your account numbers on that. So don't be bashful about stopping in. The other piece of this whole project for the water company, uh, we're going to be starting construction on actually nine different sites throughout town. That's going to start as soon as we can break ground, probably middle of April, I hope, first of June at the latest. Uh, that all work has to be done this year. Funding directs us. We have to have that completed this year. We've got a couple million dollars worth of work that's going to be going out out there. One of the things that does mean is town, some of the roads are going to be tore up while they're doing that water line. Uh, so it's a chance that there's going to be some inconvenience around town. Route 7A is going to be one of the big ones. Uh, just work with us, I guess, is a way to put it. There'll be one-way traffic in quite a few areas. Probably after the first morning, you'll be able to find a way around it. So make a circle. Uh, hopefully, they'll be moving along fairly fast in most of those areas, but there will be some inconvenience. It's a part of that whole thing. Uh, I can tell you that as far as the actual roads, we're not going to be closing off any roads, but they will be down to you know, just one, one lane traffic during that whole construction period. Uh, I guess just a couple other things. Give us a question. Yes? Just a quick question. Do you ever use like front page forum, front porch forum? Yeah. Can you post it on that? Because I know a lot of people read it. And we'll it we'll try to get that stuff out. Uh, hopefully we'll have the website fixed for them, uh, for the town website, Front Porch Forum. Uh, I think Dan has got a Facebook page too, so. There's a, the town has a Facebook page. We'll try to get it out. I'll post it there too. Yeah, and then, you know, for the squad. And the Obviously the squad and the fire department will know ahead of time. I know where any signs. Yeah. Uh, as mentioned earlier, 
there's a lot of talk about contaminated water. Uh, even though we probably are at zero chance of that, we are going to be testing the water just to have that fact in hand in a piece of paper that says we're good. So it'll be probably a week before those results get back. It's a special test. It has to go out of state. Uh, rabies clinic, March 19th. If anybody's got an animal that needs a shot, over to Firehouse, 10 to 12. Reduced rates, I think they're 12 bucks for a shot over there. Green up day, May 7th. Household hazardous waste, May 14th. Questions? What do we got? Yep. I, I have one key. Yep. A year ago, we took delivery on a new town dump truck. We still have the old one sitting over there. What's going to happen with that? At the present time, in the condition it's in, we're going to continue to utilize it. We were not offered, as far as trade-ins, as far as straight sale, very simply, we were only offered $5,000 for that truck. So we're going to continue to use it for a while. If we see where we have any major problems with it, we probably won't. But right now, it's being used as a, the backup truck, the rock truck, so to speak. All of the stuff that we don't want to put in the other new ones, we use that one for. So it's kind of a backup. And my reason for asking is because the town rumor is it's going to be given to the water department. No, well, <laughs> given to the water department, no. It'll still belong to the town. Will it be doing work for the water department? It may. But it's taxpayers' money. Don't, don't forget that. Don't forget we have to differentiate that. We need to be transparent in where I'm coming from. I totally hear you. And we have taken into account that whole system. If, if the town is doing work on the water system, the water system will be billed for the town's time. We've built that into the budget. Perfect. If it works the other way around, where the water operator is working for the town plowing sidewalks, we'll switch the money the other way. So it'll show. As long as we're good, as long as we're transparent, I'm good with that. All right. <laughs> Anything I've missed? Somebody wants to hear? It's time to go home. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Duty and an official motion to recess. So, and is everybody in favor?